Hi everyone, welcome to Chef's Travels. I'm Kevin Harrington. Today we are cooking a classic Moroccan dish called chicken tagine. I'm going to show you the proper way to put this dish together. Full of flavour, full of colour, full of everything that you'd expect from a North African dish. Absolutely looking forward to this one. So let's get this show on the road. So basically the ingredients for this classic dish olive oil, virgin olive oil, which has got to be olive oil, it's just the way it is, but it has got to be olive oil, um, some flaked almonds, couscous, some butter, we've got some turmeric, some ground cumin powder, some crushed garlic, some dates that I've de-seeded, taking the pips out, and also some saffron. I've got some fresh chicken here. If you can get halal chicken, it makes it more authentic. I haven't been able to get halal, unfortunately, so I'm just using normal chicken. Some chickpeas, if you can get fresh chickpeas or dried chickpeas and soak them overnight, all the better. But you, you can't do that, then just use tinned chickpeas. Some coriander and some parsley, all chopped up and mixed together. Some carrots, some courgettes, some butternut squash, and some white cabbage. I've left these um, vegetables rather largely cut for a reason because you don't want them to break down and disintegrate into nothing. Some lemons, two onions finely sliced, and of course a tagine pot. So first things first, in a hot pan, olive oil. This dish does use a lot of olive oil, as you can see. Next, in with the onions, give them a little stir. What we want to do is try and soften these. Give them a bit of colour just to get the flavour out because it brings out much more flavour, sweetness and uh, different flavour if you, if you, if you sweat, sweat them off. It's called sweating them off, basically. Now this dish is not a curry. North Africa, Moroccan, even though some people think spices, herbs, everything, it's not like your classic Indian dish where you use loads of curry. The main flavouring in this dish is actually cumin. Um, I've seen a lot of hash ups, a lot of people try and put all kinds of different things in it. We're keeping it very basic, very traditional. This is how I was taught how to do it by a Moroccan chef, and I've served many of these to Moroccan um, customers. So these onions are done just about enough now. And in goes the chicken. And the garlic. And the cumin. And the turmeric. And the saffron. Now I've also on the back here taken the chicken carcass and put some water with it and making a little stock, which we will use later on. So give this all a little stir, mix it in. And as you can see, the colour is starting to take effect already. And basically that is the saffron and the turmeric. Now they say, if you can use the turmeric, if you can taste the turmeric, then you've used too much. Turmeric is actually used more as a covering rather than a flavour. Bit of salt. Now what we want to do is basically pre-quarter cook this chicken because there is actually a second cooking process but for the moment this is how it all starts and what we do now is put in a load of water and what we're going to do basically is let that all simmer down and reduce a little bit and cook that chicken out and as you can see all the flavours are starting to get into that chicken. I haven't see I haven't sealed the chicken first of all because I don't want the flavours to be locked out. Basically put it in like that so as it absorbs all those flavours. 
So that goes on the back burner and leave it cooking for about 20 minutes. Um, in the meantime, I will show you how to make couscous. So basically for your couscous, what you need is some boiling water. Um, put, your, put your couscous in a pan. About the same amount of water as couscous basically. Pour your water in. Don't need to make it complicated. Give it a little stir. You don't want to use too much water because you don't want a soggy, a soggy couscous, but just enough because it is going to expand, don't forget. Um, just use your judgment. As I say, you don't want too much water in it, but just enough to let it soak it all up and come out nice and fluffy. So that basically goes on the heat. And as it comes to boil, you will see it will start thickening up and come all nice and fluffy. So simple, people make a big issue about making couscous, but it's actually quite a very simple thing to do. Just hot water, couscous, a bit of butter, a bit of seasoning afterwards, and Bob's your uncle. There you go. So that's it, our couscous is pretty much good as done. What we do, put a couple of bits of butter in there with that now and just leave it to sit. It was going to carry on cooking and basically cooking up its own steam. I'll show you a little trick how to peel your garlic without needing a little knife and getting it all under your fingernails and everything like that. So basically take your garlic clove, make sure it's dry and not been in the fridge or anything otherwise this method won't work. Take your garlic clove and very simply what you do is give it a smash Take the excess bits off. Get yourself a saucepan. Put the little bits in there. Get a lid. Put the lid on it. Give it a good shake. magic hallelujah all nicely clean for you you might find some that don't come out then just give it another little rattle and eventually it'll all come off nice and easy so chicken's been cooking for about 15 minutes now and time for the next ingredient the parsley and coriander all in the same time might look like a lot, but it's going to break down and it's also going to be what makes this part of what makes this dish what it is. And the flavours coming off that again are just out of this world. Um, technology obviously isn't good enough yet for you to smell it, but I can guarantee you that that is absolutely marvellous. So the chicken's been cooking for about 20 minutes now and the next phase, need to take it all out. It's good as cooked, you don't want to cook it too much because we don't want it drying out basically. No one likes to dry chicken do they? As you can see, absolutely gorgeous colouring. The flavours and the smells coming off this dish are just out of this world. There's nothing like it. It's not a curry dish, so you're not going to get that curry sort of smell. It's, um, it's a tajin, and this is what a tajin should smell like. Unfortunately, you can't smell it, but you can take my word for it. It is absolutely gorgeous. So the next thing we do is put our hard vegetables in our butternut squash and our carrots and get them all cooking. It may look a bit haphazard at the moment as to why I'm doing it like this but at a later stage everything will become a little bit more clearer for you. But for the moment that's the next stage and we just let that cook out a little bit and the carrots. We don't want them really really soft we want them sort of al dente 
Um, so basically we're gonna cook for about 10, 15 minutes just to get them to that stage and take them out and put the rest of the vegetables in. Now as usual, um, we now have a question on Chef's Travels every time we do a video shoot. And today's question is, um, basically, red food coloring. And the question is, what creature is crushed to make red food coloring? It's, there's no prizes, um, it's just a bit of fun. Basically, if you know the answer and you want to visit us, visit us at chefstravels.com where you can also buy things like this tagine pot and also some of the ingredients that we're using today. If you can't get them in the shops, then go to chefstravels.com where we do actually supply all the stuff for that. Um, so yeah, that's the question for today. So for all, unfortunately for vegetarians out there, if you do eat anything with red food coloring in it, there is a possibility that um, a creature, I won't mention what kind of creature because that will give it away a little bit, but some creature has been used um, to create that red food colouring. And not only used, but crushed. So all these lovely vegetables have been cooking now for about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, it's time to take them all out. Don't use your fingers because you will get burned. This dish is a bit of a mission, but in the end, it's really, really all worth it because it's a real showstopper. The next thing we do is put in our chickpeas. They will go in like that. Give them a little bit of a stir. And at this stage, in with the lemons as well. Lemons are just to give it a little bit. So I'm going to put that on the back burner and let that cook away for a little while. And start reducing down, because that's pretty much done for that one. And what we're going to do now is get the almonds ready. So you need flaked almonds, um, not too many, about half a cup. Get your pan hot, get your pan hot, whack them in like that. Keep tossing them about. Don't need anything else. No butter or anything. Just keep keep them dry. The almonds are pretty much about blanched off now. As you can see, they've taken on a little bit of brown, a little bit of colouring, and they are pretty much good as done. Don't cook them any more than that because burnt almonds don't taste very nice. So as you can see, that's the almonds ready for phase two when we get to it. And now it's just a case of reducing this sauce down. And then we should start building our dish and taking it on to the second part um, of the cooking process. And so that brings us to the second and final part of um, putting this dish together. So what we've got is the couscous. As you can see, nice and fluffy. And that goes in the bottom of this dish. Now you can use rice if you want, but traditionally Moroccans don't actually like rice, they like couscous. So keep it authentic and use couscous. So you need about that much in the bottom of the bowl. And then in goes your chicken. So, we add our carrots, these juices, as you can see, the colours on this are absolutely amazing, it's a 
fantastic little dish. If you try and impress people. Just looks good, tastes good, and something different. On top of that, put your dates. Take some of this lovely sauce, and that goes on top, like so. And that soaks into the couscous down below and helps moisten it, as you can see. So basically, put enough juice in there so it doesn't dry out. Put all your chickpeas there as well, giving it that extra warmth, so to speak. And that's just about does it for that. I'm going to turn the gas on now. We don't want it on too high, just an average heat. And that basically goes on top like that. And we leave that probably for about another 15 minutes. Say, I didn't mention olives in the beginning um, because not everyone likes olives. But uh, as an option, you can also put olives in there, which is quite traditional. few olives like that. Classic Moroccan dish. Chicken tagine, dates and almonds. As they say, proof is in the pudding. Do you know what? Fit for a king. Absolutely fit for a king. Fantastic. Thank you.